imagine the universe and us and our place in it as science would have us believe. Imagine yourself as a barely evolved hairless ape with simple guttural desires, predictable behaviors, and impulses that we will very, very soon know have mathematically predictable, charted, and resolved. Imagine existing in an entirely hostile environment, in a planet that at every turn, at every step of the the thoughtless and indifferent process that brought about your existence, at every step of the way, it stacked the odds against you. And this is as good as it gets because the minute you get outside of our planet, the minute you get outside of our, the minute you get outside of our atmosphere, you have a vast space of nothing. There's just nothing. Occasionally, you have these little interruptions in the nothing. But for the most part, the universe is cold, hostile, empty, sterile. And so vast that that little blip, that tiny blip that we call our existence, is completely meaningless. Try to imagine the world, the universe, that science describes. And it's no wonder that we feel that our lives have gotten smaller, that our hearts have gotten colder, that we struggle for any sense of purpose or meaning whatsoever, because, of course, according to the world that science describes. Purpose is just an illusion. Meaning is a lie we tell ourselves to get to sleep. And why we bother to go to sleep or why we bother to wake up is simply a conceit of our own self-centeredness. So try to imagine the life that science tells you life is. See, here's the problem. That's not actually the universe that science tells us about. That's not actually the universe that science describes at all. You, you are an incalculably improbable thing that did happen. This action leading unpredictably to this next action with so much stress, energy, and potential at every step of the way that at any point it could have gone in a completely different direction and yet here you are. An incredibly improbable thing that still more improbably is capable of recognizing its own probability. But that's not the universe that probability tells us about either. That's not the life that probability tells us about either. The probability of things having happened as they did happen is always one out of one. What did happen is what did happen. So probability can't even, uh, we can't even say that we are incredibly improbable. We are. Statistically, arithmetically, we are. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at this universe that science says that we exist in. Let's start with the room that you're sitting in right now. You perceive yourself as sitting perhaps in a chair, perhaps at a desk, perhaps standing away from the computer, resting your weight on your feet, but you perceive yourself as a discrete object existing in a space with other discrete objects. Some of them may be moving, some of them may be standing still. But there is distinct separability in how you perceive yourself and how you relate 
to the things around you. But that's not so. And this is what science tells us. That's not so. Because all of the empty space that exists between this and that, that allows you to see it as this and that, is not empty. And you know this by virtue of the fact that you can see it at all. Every iota of that space, every fraction of a unit of measure of that, quote, empty space is filled with a perpetual tumult of radiometric activity and particle motion. You are not in an empty space surrounded by objects, but you are in perpetual communication with the objects surrounding you in the same way that a person at one end of the pool splashing their hand in the water can send sensation up the fingertips of someone dragging their hand through the very surface of the water. You are in communication with every object that you can see. You are literally bathing in radiance every minute of your existence. That is the world that science tells you that you live in. Science tells you that you are in perpetual communication with all organic matter in your environment. Viruses, mostly benign, inhaled, transmitted through physical contact, are picking up little bits of RNA from everything that they have contact with, dropping them off, picking off new bits. Your body, right now, right now, is having communicated to it pieces of information from the plants outside your window, from the birds nesting in those trees. And tiny, tiny pieces of that information are being incorporated into you. This is not a pie-in-the-sky metaphor. This is a literal, physical reality. And that is part of the world that science tells you that you live in. You are not insignificant. The universe is not significant. You live in a universe where the concept of significance or insignificance is something that we can only choose on a case-by-case -case basis and only do so for our own convenience. Because there is a perpetual interrelation of cause and effect that may, begi uh, may begin with the bat of an eyelash and does not end the potentials, the kinetic potentials of that action do not end ever. There is no significance or insignificance, except as we choose it, when it is convenient, in order to help us ask a useful question. That is part of the universe that science says you live in. And that is your part in that universe that science says you occupy. You are not a thing surrounded by other things. You are an event. A precise, particular arrangement of molecular bonds, atomic potentials, and energetic exchanges that will never be repeated not even in your own lifetime, because they are perpetually in flux. You are a perpetually unfolding atomic narrative. And that is the universe that science says you live in. 
stories within stories within stories within stories. A vast, limitless bookshelf stocked to the brim with no covers to tell you where one book ends and the other begins. That is the universe that science says that you live in.